This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix and by Mac Weldon. Well, let's start things off today with some COVID news. Oh, it's that time again? You mean all the time? All the time. This pandemic has been going on for so long that it can be hard to remember things. But do you remember back in early March when Elon Musk tweeted that the coronavirus panic is dumb? And then later in March tweeted that based on current trends, there'd probably be close to zero new cases in the U.S. by the end of April. Uh, yeah. How about when Elon Musk insinuated that hospitals were inflating their coronavirus numbers for profit? Or when he was one of the biggest names that initially spread that totally bogus report about the benefits of hydroxychloroquine, which ended up uh, not really being all that beneficial at all, but certainly kept the discourse going. Yeah. Or how about when he violated county health orders to keep one of his Tesla factories open and tweeting shit like, free America now, and calling lockdowns fascist. And Elon, out Musk, Elon Musk is literally everyone's crazy father, uncle, or whatever. Like, he is the person that is sitting in his lazy boy, mm -hmm. screaming at the TV every night. Yeah. Except he's a forward-facing tech billionaire who, in the midst of the pandemic, has launched people into space. Yeah. Successfully, but has yeah. done it. Well, folks, um, the latest update to the, the, the saga of Elon Musk and COVID-19 is that Elon Musk has COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Now, actually, to be fair, we don't know 100% whether Elon Musk has COVID. I mean, he definitely has it. But this might be one of those things like Trump conceding the election where... We never actually hear Elon just straight out admit it. Yeah, I don't And if think... he does, it's because he screws up. Yeah. Uh, but here's what we know based on Elon's Twitter account. Last Thursday night, he wrote, something extremely bogus is going on. Was tested for COVID four times today. Two tests came back negative, two came back positive. Same machine, same test, same nurse. Rapid antigen test from BD. Well, this, of course, gave the strong insinuation that the whole COVID testing thing is a scam. These tests just give out random results. Free America now, you'd say. Mm -hmm. Except, I don't know, maybe Elon should have read up a bit on how rapid antigen tests work before telling his 40 million followers that COVID tests are bogus. Yeah. Um, as the Washington Post put it, this is a fairly expected result from certain rapid antigen tests, experts say. As the FDA has noted, antigen tests, which can give results quickly, are not as sensitive as molecular tests, which often take days. This means that a positive result is highly accurate, but a negative result does not rule out infection. Another way of looking at it, though, as scientist Emma Bell wrote on Twitter in response to Musk's tweet, is rapid antigen tests trade sensitivity for speed. They return a result in less than 30 minutes, but can only detect COVID-19 when you're absolutely riddled with it. What's bogus is that Space Karen mm -hmm. didn't read up on the test before complaining to his millions of followers. To be fair, at least 10 million of those followers are just Bitcoin bots, right? So, Probably. Yeah. Now, sure enough, Space Karen, that caught on mm -hmm. because, look, it's perfect. You can already imagine in your heads, and probably by looking at this thumbnail, what Elon Musk would look like with that lovely haircut. Mm -hmm. The term was first coined back all, all the way back in May when Musk was fighting with the Alameda County Health Department, and it also spawned that ama amazing image. But Emma Bell's use of space Karen was enough to get it trending across all of Twitter. And it's perfect because while Karen can be a pretty general term, this year it's often meant someone who believes that they are somehow smarter and more knowledgeable about COVID-19 than all of the doctors and scientists worldwide who deal with it on a daily basis as their job. Usually that person is just someone trying to enter a Costco without wearing their mask. But sometimes that person is one of the richest people on Earth. And he's yeah. launching people into space. Yeah. I and think putting he, humans into vehicles. I think at this point he's technically like the third richest in the world. Yeah. So it turns out Tesla's going to enter the S&P 500 and that shot the stock back up. And uh, while he was riddled with COVID, allegedly, yeah. Elon Musk became $15 billion richer. Well, he must be doing something right. Who am I to question anything this man says? Elon. I'm just jealous. Elon, maybe you should erase uh, student lunch debt for American children or something like that. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah. Anyway, as fun as it is to dunk on stuff like this and laugh and call Elon Musk space Karen, uh, yeah. thankfully another scientist on Twitter, a Harvard epidemiologist Michael Mina, very nicely explained COVID testing to Elon Musk in a long, patient thread replying to him. And Elon seems to have appreciated it. Mm -hmm. uh, he retweeted it, but he didn't appreciate it enough to actually try to clarify his early tweets about the test being bogus, though. 
Those tweets are of historical record, and I refuse to alter them. Mm -hmm. Side note, though, that Michael Mina guy, uh, his idea for how to eliminate the virus before the end of the year was published in Time this week. Yeah. And it's basically that the U.S. government should ship out multiple rapid tests to every single person in the United States at the same time so everyone in the U.S. can know immediately if they're COVID positive and contagious and quarantine accordingly. Uh, he says it would cost $5 billion and would pay for itself with the economy able to reopen sooner. Remember, we gave yeah. away $2 trillion. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, which, yeah, this all sounds like a great plan, but also this is America. So there's no way that it would go nearly as smoothly as he envisions it. But I, I no, like, people will be like, I took the test. Yeah, I like his optimism. Like, it's true. If every household in America had enough antigen tests to last like through the three, winter, three to four weeks yeah. and they test themselves periodically, we this thing would be over. Yeah, it's just that'll never fucking happen. No, but this is what, America. what instead would happen would be a process that's even more difficult than taking the test. It would be some QAnon group on Facebook posting a replica negative result yeah. that you can fill in your own information in and print out and show down at the Costco. Yeah, that and it's like you could just take the test and do everyone a favor, but no, no, no. This test, I know what happens. They're scraping my my blood and my guts out, and they're no. gonna put that in a lab. And yeah. then they're going to start they're cloning clone me. me and replace me with evil me. <laughs> yeah. Someone who respects the law. Yeah. <laughs> Don't tread on me. I love, love the idea that. of like an e an evil QAnon supporter is actually a nice person. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah the, the, yeah. the bizarro QAnon person is like, well, I don't know. Has it been peer reviewed? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, hey, stand back, friend. Keep yeah. a socially distant space of six feet between mm -hmm. us. Anyways, Elon's going to be fine. Look, he's rich. Yeah. He's pretty young. He's extremely I, I wealthy. Uh, it seems like he caught it early. Uh, he's extremely wealthy. Uh, he did unfortunately have to quarantine and miss SpaceX's big launch over the weekend. Uh, this is like the first time in nearly a decade that astronauts were set into orbit from the U.S. But and it was uh, in his brand new spaceship with the touch screens. He was probably just like, no, at the screen. I would love to have seen the arguments he had with NASA over whether he could be there for the launch Just or not. Just put me in one of those vacuum tubes and wheel me but, out. Uh, these tests are bullshit. Haven't you seen? I took two that were negative and two that were positive. This is my rocket and I want it now. Yes. They're like, well, okay, so you tested positive? Yeah, you can't come. You got to quarantine. Just put me with the rest of the positive people no, I don't think working so. over there. What are you, some sort of rocket scientist? Yes. Uh, look, but enough about Elon. <laughs> How's the rest of the country doing? And I, I should point out here that like, this is only funny when people get their just desserts. Yeah. When when you have a COVID denier and someone who willingly puts themselves at risk, that's when it's like, okay, well, I mean, what did you think was going to happen? Yeah. When no. you talk about, like, because there's hundreds of thousands of people who are getting this on a daily basis. Yeah, and most, of them, basis, but, most yeah. of them are getting it through no real fault of their own. Yes, yeah, they, they have to go to work. They work in jobs where they're around yeah. a lot of people. They they're have to go to the doctor. Workers. They have to go to work. They have to go to the grocery store. It's, yeah. It is unavoidable in this country and that sucks but when you spend all day bullshitting about it mm -hmm. then it's like well, if you didn't believe it was going to happen why are you surprised now yeah uh, anyways daily new covid cases are up around 158,000 per uh, day yeah and daily death rates are also back on the rise at around 1100 which is well, it's like 400 more every day than like a month ago yeah and it's like that's one extra jumbo like, jet oh, a day. Eleven hundred people. Like I guess that's a lot, but it's a big country. But that, that's every fucking day. Yeah. For the foreseeable future, like it. it that's like three nine eleven a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's insane. Uh, some experts are even now warning that we're a few weeks away from being uh, or from a lot of hospitals being stretched beyond capacity, which could result in people dying in waiting rooms. And there's been reports of people like. They don't have uh, enough ICU beds, so they're just like, here's this room where other people are positive with it. Yeah, we'll put up like a shower curtain yeah. around you. Plus, as you're all aware, Thanksgiving here in the States, just a week away. And despite all the obvious reasons not to, a lot of people are going to be having big indoor gatherings where they just breathe all over each other and literally pass plates around. It's it's the worst possible holiday for uh for COVID. Yes. So like with Christmas, it's usually smaller gatherings for a lot of people, mm -hmm. unless you're like Italian or something. Yeah. Most people, most uh, most wasps, you know, yeah. smaller family gatherings. Yeah. It's Thanksgiving, that's the big one. Yeah, that's where the, the family reunions happen. And it's cold, especially yeah. not here, but <laughs> yeah, in no, other places. We're fine here. <laughs> yeah, but in other places, it, it, by Thanksgiving, it's pretty chilly. You're not really outside. Everyone's indoors. Windows are closed. It got down to 70 today. That's why I'm wearing a hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Thanksgiving's going to be a disaster. So yeah, a week after Thanksgiving great. is going to be not great looking. But hey, 
A vaccine is on the way. Mm -hmm. Actually, I mean, multiple vaccines. The vaccine from Pfizer and the German pharma company BioNTech, which was previously reported as being 90% effective, even recently got upgraded to 95% effective after more clinical testing. Day one patch. Mm -hmm. And uh, this week, another vaccine, this one from American biotech company Moderna, was announced to be more than 90% effective as well. Cool. Uh, last week, we talked about how a big issue with that Pfizer vaccine will, it's going to be how... It has to be stored and transported at extremely cold temperatures, yeah. so actually deploying it might be tricky. But this Moderna vaccine apparently has a shelf life of 30 days at standard refrigeration temperature. Well, that's cool. So that's good. Yeah. And yeah, all good news. You know, I mean, given that there's like dozens of other vaccines in development currently around the world, we'll probably be hearing about more and more vaccines in the coming month. We're, we're nearing... You know, the you can end of the see tunnel. the light at the end of the tunnel. But, you know, that, that can be deceiving. You can, there's a bunch of old people in the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And just remember, if you're your average person, it's still going to be several months before a vaccine is available to you. And that's good news as long as it actually goes to frontline workers, healthcare providers, and the elderly. Yes. Because as soon as you start seeing a bunch of rich people walking around with it, then you know America just had to America again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, there's plenty of reasons on top of that on top of just the vaccine being ready to go, uh, to believe that, um, you know, state governments, the federal government, uh, your local hospital system, they'll find a way to fuck it up. Yeah. It's going to be a shit so don't, show problem. Don't, don't let your guard down is what yeah. we're saying. Act accordingly. Well, Assume there is no vaccine because currently there is no vaccine. Do you see, uh, what was it, last week where Trump was like, I don't know, Cuomo, we might, uh, we might hold off on getting you that vaccine. It's like, as much as I don't like Joe Biden at all, I'm... Very excited for that kind of, like, extremely petty shit to be yeah. on its way out. Yeah. Like. Yeah, we don't uh, need, like, a comic villain. Yeah. Like, Joe Biden. He it would sure some... be a shame if the vaccine didn't make it to New York City. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, uh, like, Joe Biden, he's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. No, he sucks ass. Everyone he's appointed to his transition team, I'm like. Yeah, so far you're just like, oh, we saw this coming. Why'd yeah. you have to actually do it? It's like Obama, too. Even but, worse. But he seems like a nice enough guy. Yeah, well, he's, yeah, he's also just, he's almost too nice. He's like, yeah, me and Mitch McConnell, we're going to get shit done. It's like, the fuck are you talking about? Was it Lindsey Graham and Kamala Harris fist bumping on the floor of the Senate or something? It's yeah. just like insane It's an exclusive shit. group and you're not part of it. Yeah. But anyway, speaking of that Moderna vaccine, it's nice to remember in this age of Elon Musk that there are plenty of famous people out there doing stuff that uh, they're completely unproblematic. And they know when to just be quiet. Mm -hmm. Now, it turns out that one of the people who funded Moderna's vaccine... None other than country music legend Dolly Parton, whose COVID-19 research fund donated $1 million to Vanderbilt University, where much of the Moderna vaccine trials took place. And she apparently didn't even realize it until people noticed her name in the financial disclosure section of a New England Journal of Medicine article about the Moderna vaccine. Nothing but respect for my president. She's like... Dollywood's going to be the first theme park open in the entire country. Yeah. Nobody's looking at Florida. Yeah. Outside of Florida. She's, she's an incredible person. She's worth like half a billion dollars, but she would be worth easily much, much more if she wasn't just constantly giving money away. Well, that's the thing. Like Elon's like, wow, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you could be richer than you already are. But like, yeah, if you look at just the amount of like charity shit that Dolly does, and it's not, you know, a lot of these people, they, they're into charity, but it's like, really... Tax you're like, yeah, I run a right think up. tank to figure out like how to spend less taxes. And also it's like to help the poor, I guess. But like Dolly actually runs... Charities that tackle like material needs, like uh, paying for like books and stuff. Oh, for it's children. good to see things and, that uh, are that, that are working. Like she tested out like a basically a form of UBI for uh, part of the country that burned down a few years ago. She's like, yeah, I'll give you a thousand dollars a month, no questions asked, for like the next year. Now, just to get you back on your feet. She did do quite a number on Pigeon Ford, Tennessee, though. What? It's just a big, uh, you know, Dollywood turned it into like a, a, a tourist trap. Well. But we can forgive her for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, anyone who you know, creates nine to five and Jolene. Yeah, deserves can, my you respect. You can do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're doing what's right. Yeah. Anyways. Give her a, a position in the cabinet. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 would, I would not uh, be opposed to it. I honestly believe that Dolly Parton would probably be a good president. But I mean, she, she, but she would never do it. Yeah. Because she's like, why would I do that? I don't know shit about shit. <laughs> yeah. Even though she actually does. Yeah. Anyways, before we get to more news, it's time for a sponsor break. This episode is sponsored by Dollywood. No. No. This episode is sponsored by Stitch Fix. As the days get longer and the weather gets colder, it might be time to take a look at your winter wardrobe. If you want to make a change this season and really start dressing up, 
Stitch Fix can help you choose new pieces that you will love. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns, and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope that's included in your box. You just drop it in, Take it down to the post office or mm -hmm. leave it in the mailbox. There's no res uh, subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or just set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards the pieces that you keep, and there are no hidden fees ever. Get started today by going to stitchfix.com slash newsday, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That is stitchfix.com slash newsday for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. stitchfix.com slash newsday. And this episode is sponsored by Mac Weldon. Mm -hmm. This Black Friday, if you're on the hunt for men's essentials for yourself or as a gift, the only place you need to shop is Mack Weldon. Right now, Mack Weldon is offering an exclusive all-black pack, which includes a t-shirt, underwear, and socks inside of a packable backpack. Cool. The all-black pack comes with more than $150 worth of products, but on Black Friday, you can get them for just $98. You've heard us talk about Mack Weldon a bunch. Uh, we both love them, obviously, especially their Ace sweatpants and Sunday lounge pants. Literally wearing my I, Sunday loungers I, right I, now. And I'm wearing my <laughs> Ace sweatpants. <laughs> Perfect. Didn't even plan that. <laughs> this it's just, is not planned. It's just mostly what I wear these days. Yeah. I mean, this has been an unusual year. I'm comfortable. Yeah, you gotta yeah. be comfortable. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we love all their men's essentials, socks, shirts, hoodies, underwear, polos, active shorts, you name it. They're all comfortable as hell and fit great. Yeah, Mack Weldon's men's essentials look great. They feel great. From working out, going out, going to work, or going on a date, Mack Weldon is for everyday life. They use a wide range of customized fabrics that can keep up with you no matter what your day looks like. And with Weldon Blue, their totally free loyalty program, level one gets you free shipping for life. And once you reach level two by spending $200, you get 20% off every order for the next year. Mack Weldon wants you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair of underwear, you can keep them and they'll still refund you, no questions asked. To grab your exclusive all black pack for just $98 while supplies last, visit MacWeldon.com slash Newsday and enter promo code Newsday. You'll get 20% off your first order. That is MacWeldon.com slash Newsday, promo code Newsday for 20% off and the all black pack for $98. Mac Weldon, reinventing men's basics. I'm, I might get that because I, if everything else is as good as uh, the quality, the backpack's got to be great too. Probably. Yeah. I, I even have the Mac Weldon face mask. Oh yeah. Very lovely, nice. Lovely mask. Very nice. Anyway, back to the news now. Here's a little update on that uh, that election that we had. A few oh, that thing? Back. So Donald Trump has, of course, still not conceded, despite definitely losing to Joe Biden and despite the Trump campaign's various legal challenges against states where he lost, continuing to just be thrown out of court due to a complete lack of evidence. Mm -hmm. Every day on Twitter, it's like I'm reading the transcripts of these things and the judge is like, all right, so... Um, so show me what you're actually saying we don't have any evidence. Well, we don't have it, but like there was one mind. transcript where it kind of looked like the Tucker Carlson Fox News thing, where it was like, okay, we don't actually believe <laughs> that we that this is happening. We just have to file this. Yeah. Uh, also, it's hilarious because you'll see a bunch of members of the GOP and even sometimes Trump himself tweet about like how great this lawsuit like, is. Oh, it's coming. Look out, libs. And by the time you see the tweet in the timeline, it's been like two hours and it's already been refuted and tossed out of court. Yeah. Yeah, Big waste of time and money and effort. It, uh, the lawyers are all getting paid, though. Good for them, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I guess. The Trump campaign is spending a lot of money. Yeah. Well, a, lot Anyways, of, a lot of your parents' money. Yeah. So, nevertheless, Trump and a shockingly high number of Republican voters are still convinced that the election was stolen, despite even plenty of Republican officials saying that it was not. Uh, one of those officials is Chris Krebs, head of the Department of Homeland Security's Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, uh, who was appointed to that job by the president and who this week tweeted the following. On allegations that election systems were manipulated, 59 election security experts all agree. In every case of which we are aware, these claims either have been unsubstantiated or are technically incoherent. So, seems like a pretty uncontroversial statement considering it's true and there's no real evidence to the contrary, but this was enough to trigger the following from the president. The recent statement by Chris Krebs on the security of the 2020 election was highly inaccurate in that there were massive improprieties and fraud, including dead people voting, poll watchers not allowed into polling locations, glitches in voting machines which changed votes from Trump to Biden, late voting, and many more. Therefore, effective immediately, Chris Krebs has been terminated as director of the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. I still love that he refers to himself in the third person. Yeah. The name is bigger than even me. I, he's tweeted so much the past two weeks and every single one of his tweets has 
the little Twitter disclaimer at the bottom. And they changed it. It's like red now. It was blue. And it changes, the wording changes like ever so slightly yeah. based on what he's tweeting too. Yeah. The, the results are, are do not line up with this. Yeah. Or this is false. This or is just misleading. not true yeah. at all. It's, uh, Anyways, it's yeah. nice to see Mr. Trump finding time to do uh, the thing that he's known for. Firing people and tweeting. Mm-hmm. Even at the end of his presidency. When... Literally, his schedule has been essentially wiped clean except for golfing, tweeting, and firing people. Yeah. He is in his lame duck period, and it is something to behold. He's even, not doing shit. Even during the protests over the weekend, when he like drove by and was like, hello, yeah. it was on the way to play more golf. Yeah. His heart's just not in it anymore. He doesn't care. Let him yeah. go. Yeah. Well, that's up to him. and That would admit uh, admitting defeat. Yeah. Can't do that's that. That's the yet. only... I, I think that's the... That and the potential crimes that he would be facing the only motivation to keep going it's like in world war ii it's like the emperor had to come out and admit that he's not actually like a literal god mm-hmm. that was a hard thing to do because all of uh you know all the hard i don't think trump's capable of that yeah, i don't think he is and that's no. why he's probably going to be one of those japanese soldiers that uh is just hiding out in the rocks for decades like i'm still president right and the rocks but mar-a-lago yeah by the way side note there is an actual movie coming out about the villages. Yeah, a documentary. Yeah, I'm What's so excited. Like, yeah, the, Magnolia Pictures did it. The way they've been advertising it is very sort of like stream of consciousness, so I'm not sure like what exactly the movie is, but it seems the, like a slice of life. Yeah, the footage it looks it looks great. Yeah, I'm sure it takes a turn somewhere, but so far it just kind of looks like this is what old people do when they get too old to take care of themselves. Yeah. They party and play golf. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I'm very interested. I don't in know it. when it comes out, but I'm that I'm more I'm more interested in that documentary than like any other movie that's yeah. come out this year. Anyways, back to Chris Krebs and his unceremonious firing by Trump. He was literally found out he was fired on Twitter. Of course, uh, yeah, as so many Trump appointees have mm-hmm. over these last four years. But uh, even Trump's Republican allies in the Senate were put off by this whole thing. Um, from CBS News, quote. Senator Shelley Moore Capito told reporters that she didn't agree with Mr. Trump's decision and said she was appreciative of all of Krebs' work. Senator Mike Brown said he was very disappointed when I found out that he had been terminated. Even staunch allies of the president expressed no dissatisfaction with Krebs' performance in the job. Senator Josh Hawley said that Krebs did an outstanding job in his role, and Senator Ted Cruz said that, from everything I saw, it appeared that he did an able job in a difficult and important role. Most Republicans also pointed out that the, the president's they do have the ability to hire and fire officials at will. Quote, it's the president's planned prerogative, but I think it just adds to the confusion and chaos, Senator John Corden told reporters on Wednesday. Quote, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that would like some return to a little bit more of a, I don't even know what's normal anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Trump has definitely changed what uh, what is normal and what's acceptable in a very bad way. But look, that's enough political bickering. Let's switch gears back to tech bickering. The big fight between Apple and Epic over Apple's 30% App Store commission on all purchases, it probably won't be resolved for quite a while. You know that. But meanwhile, Apple has done something that's simultaneously a smart thing to do, a good thing to do, and also something that will definitely annoy the shit out of Epic Games. They're dropping their App Store cut from 30% to 15% for smaller developers. That's called the App Store Small Business Program. Thank you. Based God, yeah. <laughs> and it's uh, it's for developers who combined whose combined revenue across all their apps was less than one million dollars, as well as developers new to the App Store. They give you a little taste. Mm-hmm. Uh, and since the App Store is absolutely massive, and the majority of developers on there aren't pulling in insane amounts of money, this actually applies to most developers, just not Epic Games. Yeah, but still, you gotta give credit to Epic because you don't know if a- Apple would have ever done this without Epic doing this shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Apple will never acknowledge that, though. No, no, no. We plan on doing this for a long time. Uh, In a statement, Apple CEO Tim Cook said, Small businesses are the (laughs) backbone of our global economy and the beating heart of innovation and opportunity in communities around the world. We're launching this program to help small business owners write the next chapter of creativity and prosperity on the App Store and to build the kind of quality apps our customers love. The App Store has been an engine of economic growth like none other, creating millions of new jobs and a pathway to entrepreneurship accessible to anyone with a great idea. Our new program carries that progress forward, helping developers fund their small businesses, take risks on new ideas, expand their teams, and continue to make apps that enrich people's lives. 
Thanks, Tim Apple. Anyways, that's a brilliant move because A, Apple probably won't lose much money at all. Uh, most of the devs on the App Store make less than a million dollars a year, but most of the App Store's revenue comes from the much smaller handful of apps that millions of people use. B, it's good for small developers because a 15% increase in revenue can be a lot of money for them. And C, it's good for public opinion because supporting small businesses, that's something almost no one has a problem yeah. with. Even if they do support it and don't actually do it, they still support it. Yeah. It's like that uh, small business Saturday after Black Friday. We're like, we're going to run some ads. We're going to show the woodworking shop down uh -huh. there. They you, they got a rocking horse made out of real wood that a guy built in the back. Wow. Like, we love that, don't we, folks? Mm -hmm. Anyways, Walmart's got something half pressed. <laughs> but uh, I'm really happy to see you're still in business. That's great. <laughs> I'm sure someone will buy it. Yeah. Uh, also, D, it's basically Apple doing what Epic Games wants them to do, but in an extremely petty way that doesn't acknowledge the fact that Epic is the one who got the whole conversation started. And they also won't benefit from it at all. So yeah. Apple kind of... Kind of hit the W on this. Yeah, that's yeah. that's. Uh... It's good all around, and it look. It sucks that Apple had to get sort of pressured into it, whether they acknowledge it or not. Yeah. But the outcome's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. It, this whole thing's funny. Yeah. Like I'm sure Tim Tim's... Tim Sweeney doesn't care. He's a, he probably likes it because he's fine. Maybe he's the new Dolly Parton. I don't know. Tim Sweeney like Epic's whole like stance on this thing has just gotten increasingly cringy because it's like they're acting like a small business. It's like motherfuckers, you guys pull in billions of dollars a year. I, like, I know Fortnite's just like a small part of their business overall, but man, I logged in Fortnite the other night uh, and I I like backed away slowly. Yeah, it's, it's like unrecognizable it, now. I, I have no idea what to do. Mm -hmm. I the menus are confusing to go through. Yeah. That. They're going to have to come out with Fortnite Classic within like a year or two. Oh, I'm sure they will. Yeah. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of Epic Games, which is absolutely not a small business, uh, they recently acquired a little-known company called HyperSense. HyperSense has been around for a few years, but uh, back in September, they released HyperMeet, a webcam app that basically did what Apple's Memoji does, uh, turns you into an animated character with movements and facial expressions that match your own. Uh, and this kind of thing has been around in various programs for a few years now. But uh, HyperMate seems to do it really well. Uh, so well that just two months after being released in open beta, Epic bought HyperSense and HyperMate became no longer available. Something noticeable about HyperMate's avatars is they look a little bit like Fortnite characters. Even the color palette of this HyperMate promo video is reminiscent of Fortnite. So could this be something that ends up being integrated into Fortnite, particularly its Party Royale mode? That would be... Cool. You can see people talking like yeah. that. Uh, Epic isn't saying that that's going to happen, but if so, it would be a huge step forward for the kind of digital hangouts that have been around since Second Life first dropped 17 years ago. Imagine hanging out in Fortnite and actually seeing your teammates' mouth move and their facial expressions and having an actual conversation yeah. with them in the party mode. It's cool. On the other hand, even if it doesn't end up in Fortnite anytime soon, HyperSense's tech will probably be useful in Unreal Engine development, and uh, it'll also probably see some kind of official release as a webcam app once again. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. Speaking of gaming, though, there's a new console in town. Well, several consoles in town, obviously. Yeah. obviously. You, you heard the news, right, about the new Xbox and the new PlayStation? They're big boys. Go get one. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. They're gone. Yeah. But here's a console you might not have heard of. The BL6. <laughs> it's a new video game console from uh, Bud Light. Yeah. Who are marketing it as the coolest console ever. No, no, no. Don't say that. We've all... I get PTSD from the coolest cooler. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like a six-pack. But it's actually a Windows 10 PC and a projector built in. Uh, two of the cans are cooling fans. Two of the cans are holders for the tiny controllers. And the last two cans, those are actual cans of beer, or at least a slot to hold them in and keep them cool. They're yeah. like koozie holders. Um, as for games, it comes preloaded with Tekken 7, Soul Calibur 6, and a few others. There isn't a full games list out there. Seems like it's more for the memes. Also, probably very easy to uh, hack this thing and just do it. Oh, it's probably like a Raspberry Pi inside that thing or something. No, they, I think oh, it's, it is actual Windows 10? Yeah, it's not like PC Magazine got to try it out and... Uh, they they think that the inside is like a modded Microsoft Surface. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. As for how to get your hands on the BL6, well, bad news is there's only one of these in existence, uh, and you'll need to bid on it over at shopbeergear.com. Uh, unfortunately, as of when we're filming this, the current bid is $5,200 with five and a half days left of bidding. So uh, just go get uh, the, an RTX instead. Yeah. Just get a six-pack of beer. 
Yeah, and uh, and build an absolutely smoking PC for that much money. Yeah. Just blow the doors off of anyone else. Mm -hmm. Fifty two. Imagine what the B the PC you could build fifty two hundred dollars right now. But it doesn't look like a six pack of beer. Oh, you could make it look like a you could make it look like an eighteen pack a yeah, suitcase. You really could. Uh, if this is really your kind of thing, though, you might have more luck just keeping your eye on on, on eBay listings for the uh, Miller Lite Can Troller. Uh, that's a Bluetooth game controller that debuted at E3 2019, and it's shaped like a can of Miller Lite. Uh, they only made 200 of these things, and uh, you had to personally beat Eric Andre at Street Fighter V to get one. That's a lot of games for him. Yeah. Uh, but 200 controllers, it's a lot more than one Bud Light console. Yeah, I checked. I didn't see any can controllers on there today, but I'm, I'm sure you can set up uh, an alert. They're just in Eric Andre's closet somewhere. Yeah. Oh, you guys want a controller blowing your way out? Cool. Ugh. No. Anyways, that's uh, that's it for this week's Tech News Day. Please check out our most recent videos over here. Yeah. Um, uh, we, uh, mouthwash. Probably not a good idea, but could... Did we get, did we get uh, demonetized for uh, misinformation yet? I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, wow. Yeah. We've, there's been some suspicions over the past couple of videos of uh, some false flags, but that one's still fine for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well... So check that out over here in, yeah. in the most recent Weekly Weird News, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.